Okay, uh, E. Discuss under approved facility planning and usage committee. committee pardon me. Uh, earlier this year, as we talked about various items and had people appearing before us from the public, we had the question several times about, you know, what, what kind of plans are you making for the future as far as uh, facilities and that sort of thing? And although we had been talking about that, we hadn't made any plans as such. So I think that now is the time for us to begin to make some plans. And in order to do that, I think we should uh, finally find something for Dr. Feeney to do. <laughs> Ask him to uh, put together a committee uh, comprised of himself as the leader, a uh, couple of board members, administrators, teachers, support staff, parents, community people, uh, and uh, start to develop a long-range plan for facilities and usage of facilities with the idea that uh, next spring before school is out or shortly thereafter they could report back to us about uh, what they had decided to this point and uh, I wouldn't see that as being the end of the thing I would see that as being the beginning uh, once they had reported back then we would have to talk about those things and so that we could see down the road five or ten years, how we plan to develop and use facilities that exist, maybe some that don't exist yet. That's kind of where we are now. So I think it's a good idea. Do we need to have a vote on it? Or? Probably need, a, need some volunteers. <laughs> probably need a motion to uh, just authorize establishment of the committee and uh, give it some direction. I'll make that motion. Okay, we have a motion a second to establish a uh, committee to deal with facilities planning and usage. By Dr. Green. Any further discussion? As far as getting parents or community members, um, should we put it out in a newsletter if they're interested? Or do we uh, cherry pick? Or do you, uh, do you hand pick? What, what, <coughs> what do you think? You're going to have this committee? How many, you, how many do you want? Do you think? No. Well, I, my, my, uh, based on what you, I've heard tonight, I would say uh, you would want to be looking at a committee of anywhere from probably 12 to 20 people, uh, which is, is tougher to manage, obviously, but we really want input. I, what I heard, anyway, is that we really want input from various entities, constituents within the district, which is going to make the committee bigger. As far as the makeup of the committee, um, I think there's lots of ways to do that. Uh, and putting it out publicly for people that are interested, that's one option. The danger there, of course, is you end up with a lot of people that you can't, that you have too many. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is that you try to load the committee up, and I've got no interest in voice time, too old to waste time. Um, so we, we need to just think through that. Well, you, you'll have four administrators, three principals and a superintendent and two board members, so there's six people on the committee already. You're going to want teachers. Uh, we're going to want support staff. Yeah, you want. You're going to want uh, parents, community members, business people. And granted, some people can serve multiple roles in these things. But, um, but if we want to do this, I think 20 to ask, 25 people, do it right. You're probably going to have 20 to 25 people on that committee. That's kind of a number I was thinking. I know the more people you get, it gets harder to manage, but I think it, you know, we get the right group. I agree. But yeah. I'm excited about this. They don't all have to be doing the same thing, you know. You can have some division of labor there. 
Curtis, you have a question? Could you describe the scope of this committee's powers? Pardon me? Could you describe the scope of this committee's powers? The, the scope of their powers, their powers are strictly as I see it, and disagree me, with me if you have disagreement, uh, is simply to uh, inventory our facilities, uh, talk about how we're using them now, how we might better use them in the future, and develop a plan for use of those facilities and suggest those uses and addition to facilities if they see a need there to the Board of Education. I think a succinct answer is that it's a study committee, Curtis, that will bring back with their findings and recommendations to the board. The committee has no legal authority yeah. to make decisions. They were asking to get input to come back to the decision-making group, which has to be the board by law. Would you allow the public to attend these meetings? Another one I haven't thought about. Well, uh, it's a public. To, it's you might have to. I would say yes. I would say yeah. I'd say it's a. I'd say probably governed by the open meetings law. You would think it'd be subject to open meetings. I would think it would be. Now I, I could be wrong about that. I suppose I'd have to ask somebody who's got a legal mind on this. But that, that would be my opinion at this point that it would be subject to open meetings. If it turns out that it's not subject to open meeting law. Would you still publish notification or notify the public in some way on your website that a meeting is upcoming, where it's going to be, and what time it's going to be at? I'm not sure, to be honest with you, Curtis. That's a straight answer. Is that um, it's a it's a meeting of the of, we want public input. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna defer giving you a straight answer until I've had a chance to think about it. Give up date at which you'd like to revisit this with me? Oh, what's today, Monday? How about by the end of the week? I'll email a call. How's that? That'd be great. Done. Okay. We have a motion on the floor, so let's call for the question. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Establish the committee.